Hi everybody, it is Robin, the Sudoku guy, with tutorial number 20. Now, I mentioned in the last tutorial about this particular one that we're going to look at today. Because basically, it is a 3x3 three three trick. A couple of things you really need to know when you discover, and sometimes it's not easy to spot them, that is a 3x3. Three three. What do I mean by a 3x3? Three three? Simply, here, is an example, it's not a real puzzle, but I'm just going to show you 3x3 three three in a row, a 3x3 three three in a column, and a 3x3 three three in a block. In this particular case here, we've got a 3x3 three three in that row, in this column we have a 3x3, three three, and in this block we have a 3x3. Three three. What do I mean by a 3x3? Three three? It just simply means that there's only three numbers that can go into three cells. So let me explain that a bit more. In this row, we have a 5, 8, 2, 8, and a 2, 5. If you look at those three cells carefully, there's only three numbers involved. If there's only three numbers involved, that means that one of these is going to be 2, uh, 5, or 8. Now, once you've discovered that 3x3, three three, you then can go on and do outside the puzzle, not having to worry about these things these three by threes. So that's one example. Here's another one. We have a three by three here. Again it's a two and a five and an eight. Therefore when we when we've got that we can concentrate only on these cells that we don't have anything in when we go outside the puzzle. Over here we have a three by three within a block but in a row. It's in this row. That still applies. You know for a fact that these three cells are going to have a 2, a 5, or an 8. We don't know which one yet, uh, down the road. And over here we have a 3x3, three three, a 2, and a 5, and an 8. These three cells here. Now the interesting thing is, sometimes when you spot the 3x3, three three, you'll say to yourself, Oh man, uh, there's nothing I can do to solve those three becomes a bit of a mystery and here's the clue for this particular tutorial if you come across a 3x3 three three and you can't see how to solve any one of those numbers don't worry about it because down the road you will find a number that will help you solve it now I'm going to give you an example um, here if for just just for argument's sake let's take this 3x3 three three in here if I put a 2, just for fun, here, in this column, what does that do to that 3x3? Three three? Let's say you were working for going ahead with a puzzle and you finally came to a 2 there. That immediately makes a change above. What, is it? what happens here? This becomes a 8. The 2 is eliminated because you can't have two 2's in the column. So that becomes an 8. Once you've got that 8, this becomes a 5. Once you've got that 5, this becomes a 2. And boom, 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 you've solved those 3x3s three three just because of one number you found further down the road. So if you come across a 3x3, three three, don't worry about it. Just push on, continue solving the puzzle, and eventually you're going to find a number like this that will help you solve all those numbers. Now there's another little trick I'd like to show you. Let's say um, you've uh, solved a 3x3. Three three. This is important to know. If you take this row here, there's now one, two, three, four cells left. When you do outside the puzzle, that's all you need to worry about, those four cells. And if you go through one, two, one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know that one, four, seven, nine have to go in those empty cells. And let's have a look to see if any of, any of them can be solved right now, just for fun. And I just notice immediately here, we have a one in the center, we have a one on the right, and therefore that has to be a one. So we can solve that because we noticed a left, center, right pattern. Once I've looked at that now, I'm looking again. This time I'm looking down here, we have a 4 on the right, a 4 on the left, a 4 must go there. 
It cannot go anywhere else. So we've got the four solved. Now let's say, we've, now we've got two left. Well, we know for a fact from our previous sessions that if you've only got two left in a row, column or block, it's very easy to work out that the last two empty cells are going to be a matching pair. And in this case, we don't know, but let's say you were working ahead with the puzzle and you came across a, uh, say, a seven here. Well, immediately, if you realize that this and this was a seven nine matching pair, we know from previous experience that immediately that 7 cancels this out, so that becomes a 9, and this becomes your 7. And we've solved that whole puzzle just understanding those little tricks. Now what about over here? This is interesting. If you look at this block here, you'll notice there's two cells left. The same rule applies. When you've only got two cells left in a block, you know that it has to be a matching pair. Now, the matching pair, again, is a 7 and a 9. Now, I'm going to jump ahead. There's a 7 and a 9, am I right? If we go through the counting, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you'll find that this is a 7 and a 9. But we've already got a 7 there, so that has to be the 9. That becomes a 7. Boom, bang. And you may say, well, where, how do I solve these three? Don't worry, the time's going to come where something will occur over here where you can solve one of these and that'll help you solve the others. So very briefly, that's a few tricks that you can learn by watching out for three by threes and being patient if you can't solve them straight away. Down the road, you will be able to solve them. So that's it for today's session. Bye for now.